Hey guys, Buildzoid here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 960 Gaming from MSI. So yes, I know this is an old card and you might be like, Buildzoid, we don't want to hear about old cards. Screw you! Somebody requested a 960 Gaming. Uh, so th this, this is for them. Um, we're going to cover everything on this card. So we're going to do power mods, vault mods uh, for core voltage. We're going to do power mods for the whole PCB because that's how NVIDIA measures uh, their power draw. They measure the power draw for the whole card, not just... Uh, you know, the different VRMs, uh, so, yeah, let's get straight to it with identifying the main VRM, so obviously this right here, this big block is core voltage, I am going to include the voltage controller, this right here, uh, in that highlight, just because, well, it fits into it nicely, and it is part, of it, it, you know, it, it's one of the key features of the core voltage VRM, uh, this has four inductors, and it also has four drivers, which are located right here. So this is a real four-phase VRM, which also aligns with the fact that this is a real four-phase voltage controller. That's an 81174 from on semiconductor. And actually, speaking of on semiconductor, everything in these VRMs, except for like all of the MOSFETs, are from on semiconductor on this card. All of the main VRM MOSFETs, those are all on semiconductor. So uh, below that, we find the memory VRM. And unfortunately, I can't get you vault mods for that because the photo of this uh, of this PCB isn't quite good enough for me to be able to identify the memory voltage controller and actually get uh, a data sheet for it and then, you know, do the mods. So with that out of the way, let's start analyzing how well these VRMs are built. So core voltage is, you know, one phase is this block right here. Uh, and it's made up of two low side MOSFETs. So that's that and that that. So, you know, low, low, and we have one high side MOSFET. So this right here, that's a 4C8, uh, 4C0, no, that's a 4C10. Sorry about that. I keep getting the names mixed up. Yeah, so that's a 4C10 from on semiconductor, which I said before, on semiconductor makes all of the components for the VRMs here. So that's a 4C10. The 4C10 is a 46 amp uh, MOSFET. It does 46 amp at 25 degrees. It does 34 amps at 80 degrees, and that's the continuous rating. So that's if you have it turned on and you're constantly pushing current through it. Um, however, uh, so, you know, and this is the high side MOSFET. So if we actually go and we have four of these, so you'd think the whole VRM can like barely handle 130, wait, my math is wrong, 136 amps. Uh, continuous on the high side, but that, that's not the case because these things have really, really high pulse ratings. So, you know, one of these is 34 amps continuous, but they're 132 pulsed. Uh, now, I'm not saying you're actually going to get that 132 amps pulsed. Uh, that, that, it's going to blow up before you get hit that because that pulse rating doesn't specify the gap between the pulses. It just says if you have a 10 microsecond pulse, and obviously, in a uh, in an application like a GPU VRM, uh, it's actually going to be running for shorter pulses, but they're going to be repeated uh, several hundred thousand times a second. So you can't just go with the 10 microsecond pulse rating because I, I don't actually they, they don't specify how much time there is between in each pulse. And I'm assuming they actually let the let the MOSFET go all the way back down to 25 degrees. And if they let it go all the way back down to 25 degrees case temperature, then you know that that rating is completely irrelevant for for a situation like you have in this VRM here. But uh, I do think it would be safe to assume that these can handle at least 60 amps uh, pull in, in, you know, a VRM situation where they're pulsed for uh, around two microseconds, maybe something around that. Um, last I did the calculations for a VRM pulse, yeah, it's going to be like two to four microseconds, depending on what voltage you're running at, uh, and depending also on the for switching frequency. However, they're also going to run at a higher temperature, which is why I'm saying it's going to be, you know, it's not going to do 132 amps, because it doesn't have the time to cool down all the way. Plus, the, these two MOSFETs in front of the, the, the high side are going to be dumping heat into the PCB, which will be going into the high, high side fat. Also, through the heat sink, the same will be happening. So, basically, that high side fat will be a uh, much higher temperature than what, what is used for getting the uh, 10 microsecond pulse rating. So uh, it won't do 132 amps, but it'll certainly do more than 34 amps because if it was doing 34 amps, uh, this would actually blow up almost instantly uh, the moment you tried to overclock it uh, without even raising core voltage. So um, 
yeah, the, the VRM can definitely do more than 34. Uh, I don't know how much more than 34 it would do. I think if you want to be safe, just assume it can do around 40 to 50 amps. Uh, if you if you don't really care about the card dying, you know, just push it as far as it'll go. Just do keep in mind that I don't think it'll handle more than 60 amps, just because of the fact that the 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 VRM isn't running that cold. Uh, like we're talking 25 degrees cold, not 80. 80 is relatively cool by VRM standards, but you know that pulse rating is for much less than 80 degrees. So yeah, I think in an LN2 application with the PCB freezing through, you could probably expect this VRM to handle a lot more current. But luckily, uh, I think 200 amps uh, for the core voltage for, for the GPU core uh, is actually plentiful for the uh, for a GTX 960 because this this card has a stock power draw of just under 140 watts maximum. Uh, so that again is I, I pull my uh, power uh, power data from Tech Power Up. So thanks to them for doing power graphs and all that, as well as thanks to them for this photo. So they measured 140 watts uh, peak power draw for the whole card. So if we assume the RAM pulls like 20 or 30 watts, you know, then the GPU core is pulling around 120 watts. Uh, 900 series cards ran on something around 1.2 volts. Uh, so at stock, this pulls around 100 amps uh, stock, uh, stock power draw. So yeah. Uh, well, current draw, not power draw. Power draw would be that. So yeah, about 100 amps uh, stock current draw. So, you know, twice as much available on the VRM, I think you're you're safe. Definitely under LN2, there wouldn't be an issue. On air cooling or water cooling, I would watch those VRM temperatures because, you know, uh, that continuous rating is really, really low, even if that pulse rating is really, really high. Uh, so I wouldn't really... Like, I, I don't like that big difference between them because obviously it's not going to do the whole pulse rating, but I don't know, and it's obviously going to do more than the continuous, but I don't know where in between it's going to fall. So I, I would keep an eye on the VRM. Uh, if you can stick a temperature probe into it, that that would be great uh, on air cooling. If, if it's suddenly go, getting really, really hot while you're running it, I, I would shut it down because, you know... Uh, if the VRM hits 100 or 100 plus degrees, I'm pretty sure you'll end up with burnt high side MOSFETs, which will probably result in a dead GPU core as well. So it wouldn't even be repairable by swapping out the dead MOSFET, uh, which you could do if you were really, really good at soldering. So that's the high side FET and the actual current rating. And I basically drove this all off of the high side FET because these guys right here, which, you know, still the same low side MOSFET, uh, these are four CO5s. These are rated at 58 amps at 85 degrees continuous current draw. There's two of them on the low side. So, you know, you get a combined current draw of 116 amps continuous, uh, and that's a ton, because basically the whole VRM has a continuous rating of around 400 amps at that point, and that is so much freaking power. And I do believe MSI mostly put two of those there, um, well, one, because one of them alone wouldn't handle it, but they put two of them specifically because better efficiency. Uh, they could have totally gone for two 4C10s, I think, but I guess, you know, uh, they wanted more efficiency out of the VRM because that is, that is very, very, very overkill. Though, on the other hand, if you think about it, the, the high side has that 132 amp uh, pulse rating, so I guess maybe the high side could handle 100 amps? based on that the low side is built to do 100 amps but yeah i, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say 400 amps can go through this vrm that that just sounds silly in so many ways i mean the chokes would prob probably saturate it at the end of that because i don't know of any choke like getting chokes to do more than 80 or 90 amps is actually pretty hard so yeah i would not use the low side here as an indicator of current capability which is why we're going to go with that 136 amp con uh, like conservative rating that's like super super safe and if if you wanted to actually do some decent overclocking go with you know you can you can aim for 200 and if you don't care about killing the card well you don't care about killing the card so you can just assume whatever the hell you want um down here we have the memory vrm and it's actually very similar to the core voltage so 4c05 so, you know, that's the 58 amp MOSFET, and then this is the 4C10, so that's the 34 amp MOSFET. This is the memory VRM. 
Uh, there's not a huge amount of memory chips. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, and I think this one isn't installed just the same as that one isn't installed, but I'm, I'm not sure, because I haven't looked at the back of the card, and at this point it's too late. Um, but, yeah, so basically, again, this is, you know, the memory VRM. You can't control voltage on it. Either way, this has a high pulse rating. This has a uh, 58 amps continuous is great. Uh, if we assume the pulse rating for that, then, yeah, w we can totally say that this this will do uh, 58 amps to the memory, maybe, maybe, yeah. I, I think that would be pretty safe, especially because the memory VRM actually doesn't need to, you know, it, do it probably won't be running as hot as the core voltage VRM, so I think it's safe to say that the memory VRM is plenty overkill, that if you did figure out how to volt mod it, you could vault mod it, and there wouldn't really be any risks of that these MOSFETs going up in flames. So with that, let's actually get into the vault mods. Our feedback pin for the uh, NCP81174 is this pin right here. So if you all watched my vault mod guide, then you all know measure from here to ground, multiply that uh, value by 10 or 20, depending on if you want to start off with 5% more voltage, or 10% more voltage, and that, that, you know, so you measure that resistance, say it's two kilo ohms, so you would use a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer, uh, with a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer hooked up between this and ground, uh, so basically anywhere on the, this orange line and ground, uh, that would get you 10% more core voltage, if you didn't want to start with 10% more, which would put you at 1.32 volts, you could start with a 40k, uh, 40,000 ohm potentiometer, and that would start you out at around 1.25 volts, if my math in my head is correct. Um, so yeah, that, that's your feedback pin. Um, let's see, we do have a current limiting pin. Uh, that one's right here, and that looks like we actually don't have a resistor in there. As you can clearly see, that looks empty. So, I'm not sure... Yeah, and that is current limit, so... Yeah, that looks very empty right now, but if you if you can find... You know, you, you can try and measure the resistance across that. If it's infinite, then the card doesn't have a current limiter. Uh, if it isn't infinite, then it does have a current limiter, and you can go take that out. Or if it is infinite, and you, you know, you don't want to... Uh, reach a certain current rating, then you, you can totally put your own uh, limiting resistor in there. Uh, but I wouldn't really know how to how to go about that, because I never really cared about putting limits on things. I'm more about removing those limits. Um, though I'll try look into that if I get the chance, um, so that you can, you know, uh, potentially do more sa uh, do your insane overclocking slightly more safely. Uh, so, sliding along, sliding along, time for the power mods, and here we go. That's a current shunt. Boom. We all know what to do with one of these. Short it out with a Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra. Drops your power limit. Uh, I mean, drops your power readings, effectively resulting in a higher power limit. Uh, and we can do the same all the way on this end of the PCB. So there's our other current shunt. This one's for the PCIe. Uh, so if you don't want to overdraw your PCIe slot because you're, you're terrified of burning your motherboard or something, don't short that one, only short this one. Uh, either way, that is the power mods for this card, and this is not a VRM, that's a filter. So basically that filters 12 volts coming into the card so that it's nice and smooth, as well as it's supposed to buffer any sudden current spikes from the VRM. So yeah, that, that covers this whole card. Um, my verdict on it is... Uh, I'm going to say the VRM is good just because that pulsed rating is just so insanely high that I think halfway between the pulsed and the, uh, you know, double the uh, continuous rating for the high sides is fine. So I'm going to say, yeah, this VRM is plenty powerful for any kind of overclocking you could want to do. The card is very easy to volt mod, as far as I can tell. Uh, you shouldn't see any weirdness with it. And yeah, that, that about wraps it up. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked the video. Um, I hope you learned something, and now, since it's the end of the video, it's time for you to like, share, subscribe, and consider supporting Actually Hardcore Overclocking by checking out the description, and there's a link so that you can support us, and that link takes you to a page that links you to my Patreon, so if you want to support Actually Hardcore Overclocking, you can pitch in 
to my Patreon and hopefully I'll be actually able to uh, do other things than look at photos of hardware and we can actually take some hardware apart in real life. Uh, I'm really hoping to get my hands on a GTX 1060 sometime soon so I can, you know, finally try my hand at overclocking a a Pascal architecture GPU because I still haven't gotten a chance to do that. But, you know, if there's some other thing you specifically want me to do, then you can obviously leave a message on Patreon stating what it is that you would like me, uh, like to see me do. Um, So, yeah. Uh, Also, if you're wondering about actually hardcore overclocking shirts, since there are links in the support page for shirts, uh, there are currently no shirts available. They will be, I will be launching another shirt uh, series for 5,000 subscribers. So that's 2,000 subscribers away. Uh, If you want that to happen sooner, you know what to do. Share the ever-loving crap out of all of my videos, and we might get to that 5,000 number that much faster. Uh, That's that for this video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.